What's up, everybody? My name is Jonathan Casey. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. With everything going on in the world right now, I want to try to post a little bit more content than usual. That way you guys have some stuff to watch to help keep your mind off of the things going on. That said, I also want to take this time to diversify my content a little and explore new things outside of smartphones and traditional tech items. This way, if you're not interested in tips and tricks or a smartphone review, maybe something else will grab your attention. For this video, we're going to be taking a look at the newest addition to my post-processing workflow, the Loop Deck CT. Also, I'm going to be going over their latest firmware update version 3.2 and how that single update unlocks some serious capabilities in an already amazing piece of hardware. The Loop Deck CT is a tool used for controlling various system commands, apps, shortcuts, and settings. It connects to your Mac or PC with the included USB-C cable, and it happens to be braided, which you know, I really like. Actually, the build quality of the entire unit is great. It's sturdy, but it's still lightweight for portability purposes. The knobs all turn extremely nice, and when they press in, they have a nice satisfying click to them. The touchscreen areas at the top work great in terms of sensitivity input, but I do wish they were OLED and of higher quality. All of the buttons work great, and as you can hear, have a great click to them. However, my favorite part of this unit is the control knob. It turns incredibly smooth and features a round display that looks awesome. Again, it could be of higher quality. It is touch sensitive. The Loop Deck CT even has Bluetooth. However, at the time of this video, it is a locked feature but it is coming soon. I use the Loop Deck CT as a control surface in Final Cut. The idea behind a control surface is to improve the speed of your workflow while giving you more precise control over your settings. So for me, I use it to mark in and out points of a clip that I'm about to drop into a timeline by using the two assigned function shortcuts in the touchscreen boxes up above. I can also play, pause, and scrub my timeline using the control knob. Swiping on a circular screen allows me to adjust the speed at which I scrub. And then when I'm ready for color correction, I can just tap on the small number Number two circular button, which will change the workspace on my computer as well as the CT. Here I have all of the color controls that I need. Using the knob allows me to make fine tune adjustments to the exposure, colors, contrast, and saturation. The knobs also allow me to make quick adjustments on the color wheels and swiping brings even more settings. Trust me when I say there's a lot more that the Loop Deck CT can do inside of Final Cut, but I haven't completely adjusted to using everything, which is one thing I need to mention before going any further. If you have no experience or little experience using a control surface, there is a learning curve that you need to be aware of. I've used control surfaces in the past for editing, but I was never consistent, and I typically just went back to a mouse and keyboard after failing at it for a while. Even with my small bit of experience, I'm struggling getting used to it. For me, it's retraining the way that I edit from a mental and a physical standpoint. Remembering areas, buttons, and knobs versus remembering keystrokes and having different hand placements while doing each. That said, I have gotten much faster and better at using it since first starting. The key to using something like the CT in your workflow is repetition, which brings me to the CT's strongest feature, the software. Prior to the 3.2 firmware update, the CT was still really good, so don't get me wrong. It provided the same exact control that I've been talking about in terms of Final Cut Pro 10. In fact, the CT supports quite a few applications right out of the box, including but not limited to the Adobe Suite, Final Cut Pro, Ableton, and a plethora of system controls, and these are all prior to the 3.2 update. Just like with Final Cut Pro 10, these pre-installed application controls offer specific and unique control over those applications. One thing that was missing, however, is the ability to create a custom profile for an app that may not be listed or natively supported. This was the Loop Deck CT's biggest downside since many people edit, for example, in DaVinci Resolve and prior to 3.2, the CT could not be used in that application since you couldn't remap the buttons and create a custom profile. That said, 3.2 has brought the ability to install Install new presets and profiles, which I can show you now. In order to download custom profiles for the Loop Deck CT, we need to bounce into the setup application here. This is the same application that's used to configure your, your dials, your knobs, your buttons, depending on the application that you select from the drop down list right here. However, if you're running version 3.2, you'll notice an option at the very bottom and it says find more. Just tap on that and it's going to pull up the Loop Deck CT profiles page. And here you can select a bunch of other profiles that you can download, such as DaVinci Resolve, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Outlook, Spotify, Logic Pro X, uh, Firefox, 
I mean, there's quite a few to choose from, even Isotope RX-7, which I definitely use in many of my videos. So we're gonna download the Spotify one, just so I can give you an example, and it's quick and easy. So tap on read more, and then download the file that corresponds to the operating system and computer that you're running. So I'm running a Mac, so I'm gonna download the one for Mac. Then we need to dive into the settings, so tap on the cogwheel, and then select import, locate the Spotify or whatever profile that you downloaded. In my case, it's under my downloads folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and import it and then tap save, hit done, and that's it. And you can see I have my Spotify custom profile right here, which is under the application tabs. So we'll go ahead and launch Spotify and you can see the loop deck has changed. Now I have custom options specifically related to Spotify, including the volume. I can skim ahead by 15 seconds. I can change the track. I can zoom in. I can move up or down in terms of selecting music, navigation browser, all of that based on that one profile. And like I said, if we go back to the loop deck CT page here, you have a lot of other choices here and this list is only going to grow and people are going to create their own custom profiles based off of these and you could probably find them in the forms etc on top of being able to install a custom profile you're now able to completely create your own profile similar to how you were able to create a new page within one of the pre-installed profiles but the difference is you start from scratch by choosing an installed application on your computer Creating a custom profile is really easy, but it is time consuming. My advice is to find the application that you want to create a custom profile for. So in this case, I'm going to create one for Microsoft Edge and then go through the settings and find the keyboard shortcuts that you use the most and then assign those keyboard shortcuts to different buttons and dials on the loop deck so you can access them and activate them much quicker than trying to find the proper keys. Let me just show you what I mean. So in order to create a custom adjustment, I'm going to tap on the little plus symbol here and then give my adjustment a name, which is going to be zoom. And then where it says adjustment action, this is where I'm going to record my keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to do command minus for zooming out and then hit the check mark and then command plus for zooming in and then hit the check mark again, tap save and that's it. So now I have zoom right here created under the custom adjustment section. I'm just gonna drag my custom adjustment to that first knob. Now, if I bounce back into Microsoft Edge, you can see the loop deck has changed and I have my option for zoom right up here at the top. And if I turn the knob, I can zoom in and zoom out. Really easy stuff. Let's say I wanted to use one of these touchscreen windows to add the action to add a specific page to my favorites. It's totally doable. The first thing we need to do is figure out the keyboard shortcut for that specific action. The best way to do that inside of Microsoft Edge is to head over to the favorites tab and you can see add this page to favorites is right there and the keyboard shortcut is command D. So now what we need to do is go back into the loop deck application. So at the top of the loop deck application, we have workspace elements. And right now the dials are selected. The dials are the six little knobs that I keep referring to. And then next to that, we have touch, which is going to allow us to configure the entire touch screen area here. And then we have wheel, which is down here with the clock. And then we have the round buttons and then we have the square buttons. So if we go back under the touch screen area and go back under custom actions. We can see we have nothing down there at all. So we'll go ahead and create a new custom action. And we're gonna title this action, add bookmark. And for our keyboard shortcut, it was command D and then hit the check mark, hit save. We have the custom action here. We're just gonna drag it over to that first touch screen window. So if we go back over to the Microsoft Edge browser, there's the option. If I tap on it, it pulls up my add favorite window right there, which is really, really cool. Like I said, I'm still getting the hang of the Loop Deck CT, but with the latest firmware update, it has taken its capabilities and usefulness up a notch. I'm looking forward to using it more often, especially now that I can use it in nearly any application on my computer. If there's any content you wanna see specifically related to the CT, let me know down in the comment section. I'll be putting together a full review as I incorporate it more and more into my workflow. In the full review, I plan on timing myself to see how long it takes me to edit a video using a traditional mouse and keyboard versus how long it's going to take me to edit that same video using the Loop Deck CT. So if you don't wanna miss that, you know what to do down below. 
Other than that, guys, that about does it for me. That was a quick look at the LoopDeck CT and the newly released 3.2 firmware update. The CT isn't cheap by any means, coming in at like 549 bucks. But if you're a creative professional, I believe it's something you really really should consider picking up. Keyboards are great and all, but they were never specifically designed for creatives. Um, so just give it some thought. I'll drop a couple links in the description if you feel like checking it out for yourself. And I'll also drop a link to where you can download the newest firmware update. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. I hope everyone is taking good care of yourselves and you're making the best out of whatever situation you're in and you're staying healthy. Uh, be sure to check out the second Galaxy S20 giveaway we have going on right now at the card above. And I will see you good people in the next one.